The Toronto Raptors concluded their NBA Summer League of 2021 with a lovely 4-1 record, but beyond the record, there were many things that we learned. So in this video, we're going to go through the four biggest things that we learned from the Raptors Summer League. Let's get into it. Welcome NBA and Raptors fans to Amateur Hour Sports. This is a channel where you get NBA content with a focus on the Toronto Raptors at least four days a week. That is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. This is your Wednesday episode where we're talking about the things we learned about the Raptors in the NBA Summer League. So if you like what you see from today's video and you want more of myself talking about the NBA and the Raptors in videos and content just like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to show support to the channel on a road to 6,000 subscribers. You can check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash amateur sports, where we go live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And if you want to go even further, you can check Check out the second channel where we do archives and clips from those streams, amateur hour archive and YouTube. Everything is in the description. But let's get down to business for today's video. We're talking about the Raptors Summer League experience, where again they played quite well, and I was pretty impressed with the way they played. Um, you know, some games are better than others, but ultimately they end with a four and one record, which was very nice. Didn't get themselves into that championship game because they had to go undefeated, but nonetheless. Solid performances from some players, solid performances from the team in general, which put together four wins out of five, and there's not much you can really complain about with that record. But Summer League is worth so much more than just a record. It's about seeing those young guys play the first time, seeing them in a Raptors jerseys, those players, it's them showcasing what they can do. It's showcasing how they can play. It's getting comfortable in the Raptors uniform. And for some guys, it's their chance to make it into the NBA. So it's a big deal. For some guys, that's possibly the highest highest level of basketball that they are ever going to achieve in their life. For some, that's the start of a, a lovely NBA career. But what we have in this video is four things that we learned about the Raptors. Well, the four biggest things that we learned about the Raptors. So let's get into those things. First of all, the biggest thing I think is that we learned that Scotty Barnes is a real deal. And we learned exactly why the Raptors decided to draft Scotty Barnes over Jalen Suggs. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into this because this was the topic of the Monday video. But if we're talking about the Summer League, you got to talk about Scotty Barnes. Did not play in yesterday's game against the Brooklyn Nets because... They've already seen everything they need to see about Scotty. He doesn't need to prove anything else. He is ready to take on the NBA. The combination of his size and athleticism makes him an absolute nightmare for opposition on defense. His defense looks absolutely stellar, and he is completely ready to take on a big defensive role for the Raptors in the NBA immediately as he enters the NBA because he showcased his ability to, you know, read the passing lanes, to pick pockets, get the steals, cut off passing lanes, just in general, be a menace on defense. But offensively, we saw what he can showcase with his playmaking. I believe that the best thing for his development is him to be playing as one of the key ball handlers for this team. That's where he absolutely excels. And I think the Raptors should pursue that in the near future with this player. Sort of kind of like the Giannis trajectory where Giannis came to the league and was playing as a point guard to work on his ball handling skills and obviously transition later into the small forward power forward positions but early on in his career I think it would be great for Scotty Barnes to take a lot of those repetitions with the ball in his hands because we saw so many good things about him in the summer league but we don't need to talk about that too much we talked about it a lot on Monday so let's go into the second thing the second biggest thing that we learned from the Toronto Raptors is Malachi Flynn is prepared to take the next step in his NBA career Malachi Flynn Kind of like a baby Fred Van Vliet. You know, after the draft, we said we got a Fred Van Vliet 2.0 here. And the Raptors like two things on their team. They like six foot eight, six foot nine, two way guys with big wingspans. And they also like their undersized point guards, Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, and now Malachi Flynn to possibly take over a bit of the void that Kyle Lowry has left when he joined the Miami Heat. Malachi Flynn in Summer League impressed me. He hugely impressed me. I was expecting him to be, you know, a decent player, but there were games in which Malachi Flynn could kind of take over. And, you know, wasn't really the the best player on the court but didn't always need to be he was the playmaker he's that pure point guard type of playmaker who can space the floor and also hit his three pointers but what Malachi Flynn excels at is in the pick and roll we saw that from his college days but he's now translating that into the NBA and after a very unconfident start to his rookie NBA season he finished strongly ended up taking away a rookie of the month honor which is great for him great for his confidence and He's only grown in confidence. You can really see it with the Summer League because his, 
decision making has been proved a lot. Um, even though I already thought it was really good from last season, the execution has started to get a lot better. You know, it's very difficult to have that decision making when you enter the NBA. But Malachi Flynn obviously had that. It was the consistency of execution that was the problem for Flynn. And he looks like he has improved that. Efficiency is going to be a little bit of a problem for a guy of his size. He's about six feet tall. So, you know, shooting over defenders consistently is going to be a bit of a problem as we see with Fred Van Vliet. But the playmaking aspect of his game has certainly gotten better. And I think that the confidence in shooting has gotten a lot better. I'm very excited to see Malachi Flynn in this role next season. I came into Summer League a little bit worried about him as sort of the backup point guard, but I feel a little bit more at ease after seeing him in Summer League. But next thing on the list, the third thing that we learned, the third biggest thing that we learned from Summer League is that Freddie Gillespie really conned the Raptors into getting that two-year contract. The Raptors signed him as you know a free agent out of the G League. He was playing with the Memphis Hustle, where he averaged about a double-double. And he came in on a 10-day contract where I thought that, you know, just some cover while we have some injuries in a clustered schedule. But when he played, he was very impressive, which got him to a second 10-day contract, and then a contract till the end of the season, and then a two-year contract with the Toronto Raptors, because he impressed. He was very impressed, and I thought the most impressive thing, but the fact that he was playing so well, was that he did this without an offseason under his belt. He had never had a real NBA offseason, so I thought that, okay, if he's playing this well, let's give him a full NBA offseason where he can develop, where he can work with the development team, with the coaches, and he's going to be even better next season, and I was excited to see that sort of development in summer league but what we got was an absolute shell of what we saw for the Raptors last season when he first came to the team he was very impressive I thought that he tailed off near the end of the season but then in summer league this guy looks like he has nothing to offer this team I mean uh, defensively he wasn't guarding the rim he wasn't protecting the rim very well his rebounding was suspect at best and offensively he was missing a lot of his bunnies at the rim and that was especially evident yesterday against the Brooklyn Nets and there was on so many occasions where he got a pass that should turn into a layup for himself that he dropped the pass, specifically in the Charlotte game. I felt like there were three occasions where Scotty Barnes just really found him on a backdoor sort of cut, and Gillespie drops the ball. Like, Scotty Barnes had four assists in the game, but easily could have had seven if Freddie Gillespie could catch the ball. I don't know what has happened to this player, but looking at the way he played... I don't think he's going to be a Raptor next season. He could get cut. He could get moved down to the 905. He's on a two-way deal. And after adding in Presh Chua and re-signing Kem Birch, I see really no place for a player like Freddie Gillespie on this roster. I thought that, you know, Summer League would just solidify his place in the team, but it turned into what I think that the Brooklyn Nets game yesterday was his do or die game. Okay, Freddie, either you play well here or you're done with the Raptors. And he was quite awful again yesterday. But I think that it's possible that his career as an NBA player with the Raptors might be over, especially if the Moses Brown rumors to the Toronto do come true. The fourth thing that we learned about the Raptors in Summer League, the fourth biggest thing is that Raptors scouts, they still got it. Raptors scouts always know what they're doing. They're one of the best in the league, if not the best at what they do. They never waste second round picks. They always use them to add in players that can help their team. And their scouting overseas is proving great again. The two guys who have impressed me a lot from Summer League based on our scouting are Delano Banton and Ishmael Wainwright. Starting with Delano Banton, drafting him in the second round was a little bit surprising for you know play, people like myself who are kind of analyzing who the Raptors would be taking. Didn't expect him to go for Delano Banton, but I can absolutely see why they took him based on what I saw last night especially. He looks great in the point guard position. His size and skill set is very unique. He's very good in that first step to get past the defender. And he he almost glides the rim and his length allows him to get those finishes past his defender where you know as he's going for a layup with a defender right beside him he kind of reach past them and get a nice layup in you know he's not going to be the most prolific scorer but you know the talent is evidently there and he showcased it specifically last night with his playmaking with his passing his ability to finish and a problem on defense because of the size he also rebounds very well not just because of his size but because of his anticipation and his knowing where to be on the court to grab those rebounds Delano Banton has been very very impressive. Not quite ready for the NBA, but very excited to see him playing with the 905 and see how he can develop there. Now, Ishmael Wainwright as well was probably the most impressive player for me from Summer League. Most impressive in the context of surprise me of how good he was. Because, you know, Scotty Barnes is probably the most impressive player. Pressure too as well. But in terms of exceeding expectations, Ishmael Wainwright fits that to a T. And the most impressive thing about his game is obviously the defense. Raptors, again, love that, you know, 6'8", 6'9", two-way guy. And Ishmael Wainwright loves 
playing defense. There's a difference between being a good defender and being a good defender and loving the fact that you're a good defender. Guys like Marcus Smart, they're great defenders and they love the fact that they are a great defender and they just, just, they enjoy the aspect of playing defense more so than offense. Obviously, everybody loves to score, but Ishmael Wainwright will go to war on defense to get the steal, to get a stop, to cut off passing lanes, and he showcased that in Summer League absolutely. And in other games, other than the the Charlotte game, I'd say he looks solid on offense, like a guy who can knock down some threes, a good 3 and D guy to have off the bench. Raptor scouts have done it again with the overseas acquisition of Ishmael Wainwright. A little bit older, I think he's about 26 right now, but Still, the talent that he has, I think, will offer something to this Toronto Raptors team as we progress this season. The defense is going to be a problem. Add him into a defensive set. Let him play on the outside as a fifth guy in the lineup and just... You can kick it out to him, he can knock down threes. Not the fifth guy like the starter, but I mean, like whenever he's on the court, that's your fifth man. Gets out of the way of you know, the primary ball handlers, can stay on the outside, can knock down some threes. And on defense, you can trust him with some big assignments. Props to the Raptors scouts again there. But those are the four biggest things that we learned about the Raptors in Summer League, in my opinion. So that wraps up for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are, so sure to hit that like button. Smash the like button for a four and one record in Summer League. Really goes a long way helping the channel with that YouTube algorithm. It also showcased me that you made it to the end of the video. Other things that you can check out by the channel, follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash amateur sports. We go live every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. We have videos here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So seven days a week of amateur hour sports content. If you can't make it to the streams or you just don't want to, you can also check out stream clips and highlights on the amateur hour archive YouTube channel, which just launched. Link is in the description. We already have some uploads there. We also have an upload coming out in just about 50 minutes from right now. So make sure you check that out as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel on the road to 6,000 subscribers. You can help us get there by subscribing. We really mean a lot if you did. Other videos by the channel you may enjoy. And always remember, at the end of the day, believe what I say. And if you disagree, that is okay. We'll see you again next time for another video.